Well, Astro has done it again. Just a few months after shipping 3.0, Astro has now released a new major version in 4.0. And I have mixed feelings about this. If you've watched anything on the channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of Astro. I think it is the most exciting, not just up and coming framework, but kind of established framework. And I think it's going to compete more and more with things like Next.js, which is my one of my favorite meta frameworks. And I think it's gonna get more competitive in that space. And some of this actually leans towards that, which we'll talk about in a second. Quick question. Do you think there's any chance that Astro ends up replacing a major framework like Next.js? Let me know. But it also has happened really fast. I think this is, it kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't know that this was coming. I had no idea. And now they have this new major release. But the good thing is, and we'll talk about this as we go through the announcement. The good thing is there's not really any breaking changes or there's probably not any breaking changes for you. So to be able to upgrade to 4.0 should be pretty easy. Even though I had some issues, I'll talk about that. I think that that is going to get resolved shortly anyway. So let's take a look at this announcement and kind of walk through these features for 4.0. Now, they have kind of a list here that I think are pretty exciting. We'll just walk through these one at a time. Uh, they also just show you if you want to start with a 4.0 project, just use NPM Create uh, and then Astro Latest, as you'd expect. Now, here's one that I think is probably the most exciting or at least the most exciting from, for, from a future perspective of Astro really doing something innovative. So there's, there's different pieces to Astro. Since it started static first, or static content focused, it's kind of catching up in the server world. Although the things it does, it does really well. But in the overall developer experience, to me, Astro is a leader bar none in, in the space of framework. So this is something that's going to add to that. And this is the dev toolbar. Now there's not a lot I think built into this so far. There's a little bit, but you have an Astro icon. This basically gives you links to like the docs and things like that. So that's not super special. Then you have the inspect and I haven't I haven't divin, I haven't dove all the way into this yet. But what inspect allows you to do is inspect your components that are using, uh, that are in the island architecture. So island architecture in uh, Astro means you're using another UI framework like React, Vue, Svelte, Solid, Quick, et cetera. There's lots of them. So anytime you wanna add JavaScript functionality, you can bring in one of these frameworks. And then when you have one of those components, you can use this, this inspect and you can see like which properties are being passed to a component. I think that's really interesting. This is pretty innovative. You can see like which file that component is coming from. So you can go back to that in your code, et cetera. So there's like maybe some more things to come from this for this to get better. I, I think this is interesting, but it's not really a game changer yet or this specific section of the toolbar. Now what is really interesting is there is an audit tab in here to give you audits for accessibility. Now this, the example they use is images without alt text or misconfigured ARIA roles. I posted about this on Twitter that I ran this and it said, everything is good. And a friend of mine, Todd Libby was basically like, I'm, I'm curious about that. We should stream and actually really dive into this to see how good it is. But I think that goes to show their focus on accessibility and making sure the web as a whole is continuing to get better and better. And we enforce these kind of rules of what this should be. So that's cool. Now, another thing, this is really exciting for me because I'm also working with Sentry. Um, is they partner with Sentry to design their version uh, or um, to integrate Sentry into the toolbar. And this gets down to the last section, which is third-party apps now can be integrated into it. So people can build their own integrations that go into the toolbar. Now, I think this is the most exciting because all these different things that you might leverage inside of the Astro experience with integrations like Tailwind or uh, UI frameworks or, or Sentry or something like that, now they can build their own experiences right into the toolbar. But Sentry now has the ability, I'll, I'll come back to this in a minute, um, but they launched uh, Spotlight JS, which basically allows you to get like Sentry-like experience within your locally running application. We'll come back to that. Now, I'm also gonna be working on content with Storyblock for my course. So I have a course at astrocourse.dev. It is made for uh, Astro 3.0. I had to kind of scramble to get it ready for 3.0 at launch time because they updated the major version right then but it has everything for 3.0 and I'm going to be updating this for 4.0 as well. So all the stuff that you're seeing here, I will include in this course. So if you're interested, you can go and check it out. But I'll be adding sections into this course already planned on Century and Story, Blo Story Block. So those things will be there if you wanna learn more about how they work and how they integrate, you can go and check out the course. So internationalization. Now this one is not something I've done a whole lot with, but it's basically the idea of, depending on the language preference of the person viewing your site, you can return back different data, namely data in their specific language. Now, fun fact, one of my goals is to speak exclusively to my daughter in Spanish, which is a challenge. I speak a good amount of Spanish, but not perfectly. 
but I want to speak with her exclusively. And so I think about languages a lot. And I think about people who consume content who are not necessarily English speakers, or maybe that's not their first language. And this is a great way to help tackle that. So they have a config uh, defined in here where you have a, um, this is just your Astro config. They have an internationalization. By the way, where does this come from? It's I and then 18 letters and N. That's what internationalization comes from, in case you didn't know. Um, and then in here, you can define your default, which in my case would be English. In many cases on this channel, they would be English. And then you can define your different um, locale. So this is English, Spanish, and I believe this would be Portuguese from Brazil as opposed to Portugal. So anyway, you define those and you have callbacks, you have prefixing, you have aliasing, aliasing et cetera. So if you are needing to add internationalization to your applications, uh, this is something built into Astro now that can support that. Now, here's a fun one. This is experimental, but it's incremental content caching. And at first when I read this, I thought this was like incremental static regeneration from Next.js. And I was actually really excited because I think that is a gap in Astro now. Now that is the ability to only build 10 of your blog posts at build time and then build them individually as people request them and then cache them after. And that's actually pretty cool because it's a good balance of static versus SSR server side rendered. But in this case, this is actually about build time. So basically what Astro has the ability to do is keep track of what in your content collections has changed and if things haven't changed to not rebuild them. One, one question, so this, this stores this inside of some like meta file that it keeps track of to track those changes. One thing I don't know though is when you deploy this, if I deploy this to Netlify or Vercel, for example, does Netlify, is the stuff that Astro is keeping track of what's changed inside of the source code that gets pushed? Because if it's not, then I don't know how Netlify, for example, would know what was changed previously. So that's a question I have to figure out. I imagine that this takes that into account. Otherwise, they wouldn't have created it and talked about it. But they talked about their numbers on build time improving by 80%. Now, that's their specific website. It's their case study, et cetera. But this has always been a question of how do we optimize builds with static sites in the past and different companies have done different things. So it's exciting to see them working on something here. It's experimental, but you can start to work with this today. Now, probably the most flashy exciting is new view transition APIs. Now Astro launched uh, with 3.0 view transitions, which is basically a way to animate from one page to another and make it seem like you're not doing the full page refresh that comes with a multi-page application like Astro. So Astro, every page by default is a new page load. So if you go from one to another, from home to about, from home to blog, it's loading a brand new entire page and you're not able to save like the nav bar or a sidebar or something like that. View transitions allows you to transition with an animation between those two pages so they look more natural, but also they just added some additional things. So you have the ability to animate uh, between pages without shipping a heavy spa. So that's cool. You don't have to ship React to be able to do this. Now, the really interesting thing is persisting state across uh, pages. So if you have a video player, a map, for example, let's say you have a nav bar that has um, an e-commerce store and it has the number of items that you're ready to check out with, that would be one. That I think is probably the most useful thing that comes out of here. A lot of the other stuff to me feels like good look and feel, which is nice, the slide and fade, the morph, that looks really nice. I, I think that's really useful. This to me is the game breaker of having the persistent state and being able to track that across. Now, again, going back to uh, game breaker stuff, I'm really interested to check this out. So typically on forms, unless you're using a UI library like React, Angular, or Svelte, uh, Vue, et cetera, uh, if you do a form, and I do this in my course, but I'm gonna update this. If you do a form, you submit, it's gonna do a full page refresh by default. So this is saying now that you can interact with static HTML forms, regular forms, and dynamic client-side form components triggering a transition on form submission instead of link navigation. So instead of doing a full page refresh, you can now transition, uh, trigger a transition on an element, I think, or maybe the page, I'm not sure, on link navigation. I think this is starting to really open up the dynamic capabilities in the browser of Astro, and I'm super excited about that. <laughs> Now, another thing that's here is prefetching. So you can tell it to prefetch the data for an individual link uh, based on when you hover, when you tap, when it becomes visible on a page. This is something that other frameworks have had. So I think this is kind of a catch up thing, but it is a super nice thing to have. Have a route announcer. This will announce uh, for assistance technology, screen readers, that sort of thing. 
low-level navigate uh, JavaScript API to go between pages manually, and then a complete lifecycle event system that you can plug into to customize loading. I actually, I don't fully, I don't know what that means, to be honest. I'm curious to learn more and to kind of dive into this. Um, so here's a shout out to this person, Mart App, uh, Martyr App for their contributions. Uh, read the updated view transition guide or the tutorial. I'm actually gonna check this out um, after this video and I'll be doing more content on this as well. So keep an eye out. Now, the last couple are not super exciting. Redesign logging, less logs, uh, less verbose logs, redefine stack traces, et cetera. Not the most exciting, but it's it's there. And then redesign documentation. So Starlight is the documentation template with Astro that they created. So now they're actually using that for their docs, which is is uh, feels like a good fit, like a dog fooding type thing. So anyway, that is available. And uh, anyway, it's new docs. So I thought their docs were really good anyway. Now, I also said that upgrading to 4.0, uh, you can, well, there's the create and then there's the upgrade guide. Now, there's not a whole lot here to me. So if you run, uh, at the time that I ran it yesterday, if you try to run this upgrade, it had some issues with dependencies of other packages needing versions of Astro that are 3.x. So the Netlify integration for me was like that. The Vercel one was like that for me. So even though I upgraded Astro and I tried to upgrade those Netlify and Vercel packages, they were requiring an older version of Astro and I had issues. I also had someone later in the day run this with the course material and everything worked for them perfectly. So this may already be solved, but I had some issues, so just keep an eye out. In theory, it's as easy as just running the upgrade command. I hope it is that way, but I've talked to the Astro team and they've told me this should kind of be resolved within a few days as other packages update their dependencies on Astro. So this should be good to go. It should be a pretty smooth experience. There is, I said there's not a lot here. There's a decent amount of stuff here, but the more my point is that not much has changed from a code perspective for you to have to make changes, which is a great thing. Anyway, I'm super excited about this. I'm also a little overwhelmed at a new version of Astro this quickly, but it is what it is. I am excited. I'm gonna be working on upgrades uh, to the course to be able to incorporate all of this. The one thing I told you I'd mention again, or as well, is the spotlight from Sentry. Now this is the ability to embed this little uh, Sentry uh, spotlight toolbar or into the toolbar, and it will show you things like errors, details, breadcrumbs, context, this stuff, is getting pretty cool. So the power of Sentry, which is really powerful, more content on that to come in the browser for your deployed application, but locally, which is really special. So I think this is absolutely worth checking out as well. I have a link to this uh, below. And this is the official partner of um, of Astro. So I couldn't be more excited for Sentry, who I'm already working with to be an official partner, for Storyblock that I already have some content to be the official partner for Headless CMS. All this is tying together really nicely. I'm super excited about it. I hope you are as well. Let me know which features you're most excited about with Astro. And do you see Astro competing with Next.js now or in the near future? Like I definitely do. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time.